who's from uh, France. And um, the title of this abstract, number 733, the Eurotac trial, European Tarceva versus Chemotherapy Study, Interim Results of a Phase 3 Randomized Trial of Erlotinib versus Chemotherapy in Advanced Non-Small Cell Lung Cancer Patients with Epidermal Growth Factor Receptor Activating Mutations. Dr. Gervais. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I have the pleasure to present to you today uh, the results of the ERTAC study on behalf of uh, Rafael Rossel and all the members of the Spanish, uh, French, and uh, Italian lung cancer groups. Uh, the background, I will present you the background of the study first. Uh, until 10 years ago, the only treatment that we have for patients with advanced non small cell lung cancer was uh, traditional intravenous chemotherapy. We used the chemotherapy for first-line treatment and uh, as well for second-line treatment when patients uh, relapsed after the first line of treatment. And uh, approximately uh, eight years ago, a uh, new class of drugs came uh, on the market. It was the EGFR TKA. Uh, these small molecules uh, act, uh, block the, the loop of the EGF. Oh, no. Sorry, uh, these small molecules bind to the internal part. Oh, where is the mouse? Sorry, the, the mouse. Can we? These small molecules act by binding to the inter, inter thank you to the internal part of the receptor and uh, block the loops and stop the cell uh, proliferation. Uh, so when we began to use the oral TK sorry when we began, when we start to use these drugs uh, most of the patients had only slowering of this tumor growth uh, but some patients around 10% uh, of patients in uh, western countries or 20% percent of patients in east asia some patients had very uh, dramatic improvement uh, of their uh, tumor growth is this molecule so the question that arises at this time uh, was why is this tumor, why is this patient had such a dramatic improvement with these new uh, drugs and there was a big discovery in 2004 uh, scientists discovered that these patients had a mutation on, on the internal part of the EGF receptors. Uh, so the ERTAC study was designed at this time. It was uh, the question of the ERTAC study was, was that if these patients had such a dramatic improvement with EGFR TKA, why shouldn't we use them as first line treatment? instead of intravenous chemotherapy. So this it took uh, about four years to recruit about uh, 174 patients. All these patients had advanced non-small cell lung cancer and EGFR activating mutations. They, they were randomized between uh, intravenous chemotherapy, which was the standard of care at this time, and half of the patients received oral erlotinib until progressive disease. And the primary endpoint of the study was progression-free survival. Secondary endpoints included response rate, overall survival, toxicity, and quality of life. So the result of the study, the main result, was the progression-free survival. We demonstrated that patients who received or EGFR TKA had a PF, median PFS around 9.7 months versus 5.2 months for patients who received intravenous chemotherapy as first line treatment, and it was highly significant with another ratio of 0.37. Secondary endpoints of the study included response rate. We had a very high response rate with erlotinib, about 58%, and it was 15% uh, in the chemotherapy arm. Uh, this curve figured the overall survival. As you can see, there was no, to this date, there is no difference of overall survival between the two treatment groups. And uh, the, the reason is that, is that 
patients who received chemotherapy as first line treatment, when they relapsed, they received the EGFR TK as second line treatment. Now let's see the toxicity. Patients who received chemotherapy in first line treatment had mainly hematological toxicity with a decrease of white cell, red cell platelets. Uh, while patients who received erlotinib as first line treatment had mainly skin toxicity and digestive toxicity like uh, diarrhea. So in conclusion, our tax study is the first prospective study in Caucasian patients with uh, advanced non-small cell lung cancer who compares intravenous chemotherapy to EGFR-TKA. This, this, this study results confirms the superiority of uh, EGFR-TKA over intravenous chemotherapy in terms of median PFS. Up to this time, there is no difference of overall survival, and it can be explained by, by the high level of crossover. Toxicity of erlotinib is manageable, so we think that erlotinib will become a new standard option for patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer and bearing and EGFR activating mutations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, questions or comments? Yes, please. I would like to ask about the overall survival because um, that's been seen in other studies like the IPAS because of the high crossover. But um, can you compare the overall survival in this study for all of the patients with overall survival in, in um, historical controls that have only used chemotherapy? And is there a difference there? Do you mean, is there a way of showing that allotinib is, is improving? the survival without directly comparing it, it can you use historical controls to do uh, that you mean the question is uh, does uh, does erlotinib uh, improve the survival compared to patients who with mutations but without erlotinib is it your question yes using historical controls yes. if you can't use the the control arm in this study yeah. uh, in fact, EGFR mutations are uh, not only a predictive marker of efficacy, but they are two uh, prognostic factors. Uh, patients with EGFR uh, activating mutations have a better survival than patients without EGFR act, uh, had a better survival than patients without the EGFR activating mutations. So they are it's a prognostic factor. It's well known. Before uh, 10 years ago, we, don't, we didn't have these molecules. And we know with the historical comparison that people with EGFR mutations have a better survival than patients without the mutations, even if they don't receive EGFR TKA. That's the first point. So EGFR mutations are a prognostic factor. But it's true, uh, a predictive marker of efficacy. When people have EGFR activating mutations, and if they receive EGFR TKA, they will have a better survival than patients with EGFR activating mutations without EGFR TKA treatment. Can you put some figures onto that? Can you put some numbers to that? A number? Uh, he wants you to speculate. You, t you mean uh, what's the number of, uh, what's the survival without and with the treatment? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, Dr. Parker, difficult. would you like to comment? I think I, I understand. I know. I understood your question. Your question is whether the historical controls for patients with EGF receptor activating mutations and how they did without DKIs. And there's, there is, I think there's a publication on this that from a Japanese group that showed that the historical controls did worse. So it, at the two worse, then they have a worse prognosis. That was my understanding. And so, and it's true they have now a good prognosis. The question is, have they a good prognosis because they have good treatment? 
and respond better to chemo and also to DKIs. So it's a little tricky. But I think that's it's true that I have a good prognosis is the treatment, but maybe I'm treated to have a worse prognosis. Right. We're going to have to move on, but for the, for the group, you know, the, the issue here, of course, is in these big randomized trials, the patients on the chemotherapy arm will ultimately cross over to the uh, targeted therapy, and since they have the, uh, the genetic mutation uh, for response, they would then benefit. So it makes uh, doing a survival endpoint trial very difficult. The good news is all patients do well, so to actually show that there's a survival benefit is a difficult task. Um, though, um, um, and this trial uh, you mentioned is still immature to even start to address that. Uh, but certainly um, the toxicity um, looked like it was favorable. Um, why don't we move on?